Agriculture, two of the major elements that make up food, water, and shelter. Blood Cove here. Let's delve into agriculture and what's involved. As you start gaining ranks in agriculture, start saving the rotten food. It will be used later on to create fertilizer, and this will get you a head start once you have your agricultural workbench unlocked. This is what you're going to need to build it. You can take the rotten food and start turning that to fertilizer. You can take uncanned food that is about to spoil or go bad and turn that into seeds for your cultivation box and hydroponics box. Now those plant fibers you've been collecting by the dozens, you now have a use for them. Slap them in your workbench and start turning them into feed. They'll be used to feed your animals. We'll get more into that under the breeding pin. On the topic of seeds, this picture is two spots where you're going to find lots of seeds. This next location has buildings with bags which are good on seeds as well. You can also find them in buildings scattered throughout the map that look like actual farm buildings. Your cultivation box is going to be the next thing you're going to want to get going. That's where you grow your plants. As you can see what's required plus you need at least some water fertilizer and seeds to get it going. To use the cultivation box, you're going to drop a seed into it, then you're going to apply some water until it gets to 100%. Next, you can either take fertilizer or animal waste if you have your animal pen with pigs running. Put that in. You're going to want to keep monitoring the cultivation box and its growth to keep water and fertilizer as high as possible inside the greenhouse. It will read 100% during the day. Each plant takes 15 days to grow. My suggestion, if you're going to be trying to live off the plants, plant them in succession. Plant a couple plants each day so that as they grow and grow into fruitation, then you can go ahead and start picking them in order. Let's move on to the hydroponics box, which is very similar to the cultivation box. As you can see, it does require a little bit more to build. It does use nutrient solution, no fertilizer or animal waste, and you need to connect this to a water source, such as a water storage. Hydroponics box. Functions similar to the cultivation box. You drop a seed in, you connect the water, hit hydrate, drop your nutrient solution in, and then all you have to do is come back and keep monitoring it for the nutrient solution. Next, let's move on to the wine barrel. As you can see, it's another simple build. All you have to do is take your crops that you just picked, put them in, craft up whatever you're crafting up. It's a good, quick, easy way to keep your thirst up and your mentality up. Whatever I don't put in the wine barrel to make into drinks or whatever, I run over and turn into seed or I can them. Now another quick and easy build is the beehive. Once it's up, it will start generating honey very slowly. All you have to do is come back and pick up the honey, not honeycomb, it skips that step for you. The only suggestion I would make is I place mine a little bit farther away from my base because I don't really like the hum of the bees all the time. Now that we got those up, let's move on to the well. It is a little bit more complicated because you're going to need a drilling tool. As you can see, you are going to need a drilling tool. But other than that, you can see it's a simple build. Once you put it up, now you have water at a certain location. Once you have your well up, this next step is a little bit more undertaking. It does require electricity. So once you get electricity, this is going to help boost you out. It's your water storage tank. Your water storage tank is what's going to help feed into your hydroponics boxes once you get them in mass. As you can see, it is a little bit more complicated of a build. You do need electricity to, func to make this function, but it will help keep your hydroponics boxes going without the need of running back and forth. The next build we're going to get into is the greenhouse. The greenhouse does require a few more items than the other agricultural buildings, but in its simplicity, once it's up, it's up. 
Um, you do need to put it on a 2 by 3 foundation. I did get it to go green on the ground, but only for one pixel. Now, once you get your greenhouse up, along the back wall between the two side doors, you can put one whole row there. You do need to keep a space for you to walk in between the rows as you build your green, the inside of your greenhouse. Once the plants do grow, they the hitboxes of the plants will stop you from jumping over them to reach anything behind them. So I suggest just making rows big enough to get in. You can always add more greenhouses and expand that way. We are on to our last build, the breeding pin. It is not a difficult construction in terms of materials versus the greenhouse, but in the complexity of its running, I believe it's the most complicated out of all the agricultural buildings out there. So once you have your breeding pen up, you're going to want to visit two merchants. Here's the picture of the first one. It's over by the starting area. And the other one is a little bit far off. Once you get your animals, go ahead and put them in. Their status will automatically, as a baby, be 0.0. .0. Their status will go up 0.1. Per day in game. So in 10 days in game, they'll be adults at 1.0, after which they will climb 0.2 per day as they go up. If you wish to use the animals to reproduce, such as pigs for the animal waste, you will need one male and one female. The females are pigs, sheep, and chickens. The males are boars, rams, and roosters. You'll need one of each. Do not have any other animal in or they will not reproduce. They'll only reproduce when their status reaches 4.0, at which point they will drop back to 1.0. You'll have to keep putting feed in, which is from the agricultural workbench, and you'll have to put at least for every two animals in there, one feed per day. The water, I filled it up. It was dropping two liters roughly every day. On days that it began to rain, it seemed to jump back up to 30 liters. Not sure if it was because it's in the vicinity of the water storage tank or the rain itself, but it was. I was noticing it would drop to 26 liters, it would rain, and then it would go back up to 30. So what I would do is one breeding pen for your chickens, one breeding pin for your pigs, one breeding pin for your sheep. Male and female in each, those are your breeders. Any offspring that they produce, you can pull them out, put them in a fourth pin, and let them grow up there so the others can keep reproducing. Even though you can't have multiple animals in there, once they hit the fertile stage, you need to start pulling them out so they can reproduce. Your pigs will drop animal waste, which in turn goes into your cultivation box. Your chickens will drop eggs, so they'll have to have access to run around and collect them. Unlike what I did on building them, building little doors because I did not really want mine out running around. As far as the animals themselves, if you wish to get the pork off the pig, uh, simply take them out. You can dismantle it using a knife. It will give you whatever the components are. I believe chickens were chicken meat. Um, the sheep will give you mutton and pigs will give you pork and leather. In this episode, we've gone through all the agricultural buildings that you can produce, their functions and their uses. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit the like, subscribe button, really helps me out. If there's a video you'd like for me to do, post it in the comments. Until next time, catch you later.